Here are the things that you must do in order to buy a home in the year 2022. I didn't mean for that to rhyme. Hey everybody, this is Matt Stone Sr. with the Utah Real Estate Pros and thank you for visiting my YouTube channel. So every day I talk to clients, both new and old, and their hopes are to buy a home in the next 12 months. And the thing that I'm seeing from a lot of people is they're coming to the real estate market a little unprepared. So I put this list together of the things that I think that you really must do or you really must have in place if you have any hopes of buying a home uh, in the next year, in 2022. So we're going to go over those. If you have any questions, if you have comments, if you disagree with me, please put it in the comments or look in the description below. There's lots of ways that you can get a hold of me uh, through social media. My phone number's there too. So if you want to call or send me a text, it's always me that answers and I would be happy to talk to you. So let's get on with it. Number one, you really have got to lose the mindset that home prices will go down. In Utah, at least, prices are going to continue to rise because of simple supply and demand. Now, they may not be skyrocketing like they have been over the last 18 months or so, but they are not going down anytime soon. I, I actually really hope that the frenzy might slow down a little bit and give people a slightly easier way to get their offer accepted. But if you're holding on to the idea that somehow prices are going to go down and you're going to get a better deal... Uh, on a house, or they're going to be even become more reasonable, uh, I think you're sadly mistaken. Um, and if you hold on to that attitude, it really could affect every other decision that you need to make between now and home ownership. And it will likely mean that you won't be getting the property that you're hoping for. Okay, number two, you've got to have your finances figured out. Okay, you need to know what you can actually afford per month in a home. And of course, that does include your mortgage payment, but you also have to consider things like how much is the HOA going to be? I've seen them as low as 25 a month, and I've also seen them as high as 300 a month, depending on what's included. So you have to figure that. You're going to have to figure that maybe you're going to pay more for utilities. You might have a longer commute because you're living in a, in a better area or a different area. So these are all things that you have to consider in how much you can afford each month. So that leads us to the next point, number three, which is you need to have a realistic expectation of your needs versus your wants when it comes to the house you're going to buy. I never expect my clients to buy something that they don't love, but it really helps to have some realistic expectations going into it. This way, you're on the same page with other people who you're going to be living with, and no one's going to be disappointed when you actually start going out to look for houses. I think that you need to be firm on your needs but also be flexible on your wants because your wants may be somebody else's needs and they'll pay more for those needs than you will for your wants. So think about what's important to you. Maybe your needs are a certain number of bedrooms, certain size yard, certain amount of parking or garage space. Those are things that you probably shouldn't budge on, but maybe your wants are the type of flooring, colors of the walls, types of cabinets. These are things that maybe you could be flexible on and upgrade later. So I think, again, it helps to be really clear on what your needs of a house are versus what those wants are. Okay, this takes us to number four. So once you've kind of figured out your budget and the kind of house that you want, the next step is you really must talk to a lender and at least get pre-qualified if not pre-approved. Now, these two things are different. I know a lot of people kind of interchange them synonymously, but there's a difference. I'll make a video in the future about what those differences are, but just know it's easy to get pre-qualified. Your lender will give you a letter so that then you can start to go and look at houses and possibly put in some offers. The reason you need this is because sellers and their agents, they're not going to seriously entertain any offer from someone that's not at least pre-qualified. And in some cases, they won't even answer questions about the house or the type of offer that they're looking for. So do yourself a favor before you go out and look for houses, make sure you talk to a lender and at least get pre-qualified, if not pre-approved. Okay, number five, and this is a pretty big one if you have a hope of actually getting into a house in 2022. You must have extra cash over and above the down payment and your closing costs to cover the possibility of an appraisal gap. In this market, sellers 
do not want an offer that isn't guaranteeing that you'll buy the house if the appraisal comes in a little bit low. So what happens is the bank is only going to give you a certain percentage of the home's value. That could be very different than what you feel you want to pay for it. So an example would be if a house is for sale for 470, but you have to offer 500,000 to buy it. Well, the bank isn't going to give you $500,000 in a loan or even a percentage of 500,000. They're only going to give you that percentage based on what an appraiser says it's worth. So if there's a gap between what you purchase it for and what the home appraises for, you're on the hook to pay that out of pocket in cash at the time of closing. You want to be able to write an offer that tells that seller in case the appraisal comes in a little bit low, you have the ability to bridge the gap between what you're offering and what the bank is going to be lending. I usually suggest at least $5,000 for an appraisal gap, but more than that certainly will help your chances of getting your offer approved. So make sure you figure out how much money you have over and above the closing costs and your down payment for that appraisal gap in case you need it. Okay, number six, you really must have a good source for finding available homes. You need to find a good website or even go directly to your local MLS to find your homes. A lot of people start their search on places like Zillow or Realtor.com. And in my experience, these aren't the best. There's a lot of homes on there that aren't actually for sale, uh, or they'll say they're pre-foreclosure or some other thing like that, but they're not actually homes that are available for you to tour, get information on, put an offer in or purchase. Another reason that I would say maybe avoid those types of places is when you put your information in, you're going to get bugged by at least one, if not many real estate agents trying to earn your business. So my advice is to find a good local realtor that you can use their website to register on. I would suggest the utahrealestatepros.com, of course. Um, when you register on a good site like that, you're not going to get hassled by a bunch of agents. Yes, I will reach out to you and see if I can help you in any way. But you have the ability then to see houses as they hit the market. Sites like mine update about every 20 minutes. So all the houses that you see on there are actually available for sale. And while I'm on the subject, let me give you a little tip about dealing with real estate agents. I know a lot of people just want to avoid them at all costs and ignore the texts and ignore the emails. And you can certainly do that. But if you ignore them, they're just going to keep coming back, sending you emails, sending you texts, giving you calls, trying to, to reach you in any way possible. My advice would be just answer them. Send them a text saying, hey, I'm just looking for a friend or just browsing for now. Maybe we'll buy in a year. Or maybe you are serious and you need a home because you just relocated or something like that. If you just be upfront and honest with that real estate agent, they're not going to harangue you. They're not going to harass you and they can be a good benefit to you in the long run. Okay, guys, number seven, you must have a team in place that you can trust and that's going to help you in your home buying journey. So first of all, you're going to need a great lender. And there really is a big difference between a great lender and a not so great one. Usually that translates into more or less money out of your pocket when it comes time to close on a home. You're also going to need a great real estate agent. To be honest, most of them out there suck. They do it part time. Uh, they're not serious about it. It's not a career. Uh, maybe they just do it for friends and family. So I would suggest talking to a couple of them, let them take you to lunch or dinner and really see what they're about and make sure you're going with somebody who's going to do a really good job for you. You're also going to need other resources like title companies, home inspectors, handymen, things like that. A lot of people do already have these resources, and I always suggest using them if you're comfortable with them and you, you like their service. If you don't have anybody in mind, I usually provide lists to my customers, my clients, several from each industry so that you can look them up, talk to them, read reviews, things like that and work with someone that you feel good about. You're also gonna need some close friends and family members who can give you good advice and be there for you when you have questions. Um, a lot of times it can be difficult to make all of these big, huge decisions by yourself, but if you have some friends and family members who have your best interest at heart, those are gonna be some good sounding boards and they can usually help you make the right decisions. Okay guys, lastly, you must be ready to act. You have got to have all these other things in place so that when houses hit the market, you are ready to see them. You may need to look at a lot of houses, okay? You need to be ready to go see them on the seller's terms. 
in our market at least, sometimes houses hit the market on a Friday. They have an open house on a Saturday, maybe a few more showings that evening, and then your offers have to be on by Sunday or Monday morning. So you've got to be ready to see these houses and make some decisions. You're going to need to be ready to put in offers. That means you need to understand the real estate purchase contract or at least have an agent that you trust who can explain all the different parts to you and help you make a good decision that works for you but also is appealing to the seller. You need to be ready to put down earnest money and send it to a title company or an escrow. And lastly, you need to be ready to commit. By having all the other steps in place, you can be sure that when you see the right house, it's the right house. You won't be second guessing yourself. You won't be scrambling to get pre-approval letters. You won't be scrambling to get your finances in order. These are things that are gonna be very important so that you can pull the trigger when you see the right house and you feel good about it. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it brings some value to you and might make it a little easier uh, when it comes time to start looking for houses and uh, getting serious about buying a house. I am always here for my clients. I'm always available through text or phone calls, no matter what time, day or night. Uh, I also want to make it easier for you guys. If you have any questions, again, you can put them in the comments. You can DM me, message me, phone me, text me, carrier pigeon, whatever works best for you. And I promise I'll get back to you as soon as I can and give you the best service possible. So until next video, uh, wishing everybody a happy holiday season. And as always, happy house hunting.